35 years old, trying to reverse a trend of seven straight losing seasons for the University of Incarnate Word. It is time to play basketball here at Moody. The Cardinals win the opening tip. This is Elijah Davis with the backdoor cut. And Sky Wicks missing the dunk. Now, you, you're playing at another place right now. There's not a lot of games that Incarnate Word has quite like this. But you got to finish the basket. It's not about dunk. It's about two points. And on the other side, it's the UTEP transfer, Zarek Onyema. Off the mark from up close. It's going to always start with defense with Rodney Terry. Cardinals will play free. They will take their chances on the three-point shot. That's something Texas struggled to defend against San Ez in the exhibition. That's blocked by Oyema. Now, just in that scenario, you got an individual who's taken two shots and he's missed them. And it just does things to your mind now. Now you get a wide open shot. How will he respond? Over for 2. Tyrese Hunter cannot connect from outside. It's a Cardinals team with three. Counted three returning players from a season ago. I like the defensive intensity right now of Texas. Look at the activity. Keeping guys in front of them. All and make fade away. away. My goodness. We know, <laughs> we know that he is not shy tonight. Sky Wicks. It's a transfer from State College of Florida. The Juco ranks should be one of the top producers for the Cardinals. This is another newcomer for Texas. I.T. Horton out of Central Florida. Onyema wrestling with Davis for the loose ball. Davis the other way. Blocked by Tyrese Hunter. Horton hesitation. The kick out. Aismas in and out. Hunter collects. Fires. It hits. Texas is on the board in 2023. Sometimes coming out in that first game, you guys got jitters, you got that, but I love the activity, what Texas is doing on the defensive side. Rodney Terry said that's where it starts with them, and that's what they have to continue to build on. They're going to have so much more freedom to shoot early in the shot clock. Something that we did not see under Chris Beard, and what a save by Wicks to set up Dylan Heyman, and the Cardinals have their first bucket. Yeah, and that's one of those situations where guys are leaking out a little bit. They assume that someone had the rebound there, but then, just like in so many things in life, you cannot assume. <laughs> you know what they say, but we won't repeat it. Three-point shot, no good. Horton, that is his game. Yeah, he's a shooter, and, you know, it's, it's just interesting how in these scenarios... Oh! Oh, Yimma, give me that! Dylan oh. Mitchell up and over, but oh, Yimma, now, he's a physical presence, Bruce. Yes, he is. Now, Mitchell, the fact that he outstretched his arms there... Oh, that's what it's in the <laughs> Off the backboard, you know... As we as we see the first block by Oyema, it's what gets guys going in this game. You know, I got your back, young man. He makes the right rotation, and he's right there for the shot block. But more importantly, even continuing on in that play, you see Max get his hands up. And sometimes it's just about altering the shot. It's not necessarily about blocking it, but making them do something different. Three blocks already by the Longhorns. Two of them from the UTEP transfer. A guy that Rodney Terry recruited to UTEP when he was very much under the radar. Josh Morgan, 13 in black. He will be one of the tops for the Cardinals. Dylan Mitchell shows up, but is fouled. He was going for it. All oh, Bruce. Ooh. Now, we talk about Mitchell's ability in the open court. Just watch him here. Oh, if he doesn't lose the ball, that's... that's that's a little highlight for him. That's an early season highlight. Early dunk of the year candidate to last beyond the opener. But understand this. This won't be the first time that you see these types of plays no. from this young Dylan Mitchell and what he's able to do. And that's the thing that Rodney Terry did when he took over for Chris Beard. He allowed this team to really start to run as Dylan Mitchell misses that free throw. The foul, by the way, on Josh Akpavla. It's a tough one to say. Warming up the pipes for the season. There we go. Yeah. And it's two misses for Dylan Mitchell. 
And it's Cardinals basketball. And this is where the youth in Dillon, he just has to settle down right there, take another extra breath. You know, that was that was a huge play there. So step up, knock down your free throws, and move on. 5-2 lead for the Longhorns. Team with so many new faces. Lost five of the top seven scores from last season. One of them is in the house, by the way. Serge Ibarra is in the building. Ace miss with the D. Skywicks driving on Mitchell. Gives some space. And it's feathery. Nice touch by the junior from Jersey City. That's a tough, that's a tough shot there. Sometimes you just got to go ahead and deal with it. He had a hand out. He made, made a tough shot. Yimba lost the head. Hunter wanted to Yimba. Lost it. And here's Aceman's free throw line. Too strong. Rebound from Zion Hammonds. That's just a little chaos right now. Early in the game, sometimes, you know, when it comes to these in-state rival games, or not necessarily rival games, but someone that you're not accustomed to seeing, it's not a sense of urgency as it should be. Sky Wicks taking over for the Cardinals, and UIW takes the early 6-5 lead. Yeah, there's something about the edge right now that the Cardinals are coming out with. Not to say Texas doesn't have it, but they're mashing it. Well, the, the issue is this. Texas plays against big teams uh -oh. every single night as he makes a great move there. But sometimes this is a this is the mental aspect of getting up for a game where you're not going to see a team quite like what in Waco or in, in College Station. Oh, give up with the bucket. Texas still playing without Dylan Jasu. He should be out for a little while longer coming back from a foot injury that helped him out of the NCAA tournament final two games. They do have Caden Shedrick, the Virginia transfer, in the fold as Hunter does it again. Give him two from deep. We talked about last game, how with the ball in Max's hands, he makes the right decisions, whether it's him scoring or finding another three-point shooter. Eyes up, always ready to get rid of the ball in the right spots. Scott Wicks, of course, he's going to keep letting it fly. Why not? Rebound Ace Wicks. Well, there's something called a shooting percentage. That's why not. He's got to sometimes do something a little oh, The rejection, Aquabla. Josh Morgan, coming in with the good hands. Blue guy. Blue on those hands right there. Ace Miss wide open. He's got the range. Matching the jersey number and fired off for his first three-pointer. I love it when Brooke does things. I got a hand on that. Ace Miss rebound. I see incarnate word that they're kind of sluggish getting back in transition. And can they keep up with this tempo? Horns are big for this. Was that on the scouting report, Bruce? That was not on the scouting report. But you know what? He's playing the game, and you talked about it earlier, how Rodney Terry allows his players to feel free to do these things. Ten zip run for the Longhorns. the glass. Ace Miss with the defense. Mitchell with the contest. Ace Miss. He's got that kind of range. That was a traffic though. Wicks with the rebound. Like you said, absolutely right. He has that kind of range. That's going to be a foul on Texas. When we come back, Texas, you know, as a, as a father, you, you understand what he's going through right now. Seeing his son oh, in his yeah. first collegiate game action at his alma mater. Couldn't get any better than this. And out of the timeout, three-pointer no good by Hammonds. The push to Dylan Mitchell. Mitchell tested the NBA waters. His feedback, the same that he got from Rodney Terry in the Texas staff. More defense, more rebounding. The shot will come. Here's TJ. Four. Stripped by Horton. Horton with the finish. Defense lead the oh offense, and Brock Cunningham gets it back. Horton, this is his bread and butter. Got it. Defense turns to offense instantaneously. 
you see the activity, good energy to start, Bruce. No, you got to have it, and this is what it's about. You don't get up just for the big games. You got to get up for all games because it's a chance to improve and continue to work on the things that they're working on in practice. 15 nothing run for the home team of Longhorn. Sky Wicks behind the back pass. Oh, right on the line. Deshaun Robinson, baseline. Dylan Mitchell affected that one. Cunningham, uh -oh. back door. That's just cool. And he thought Mitchell was going to make the cut. You know, we, we talk about the energy and where it starts. You think you got an easy drive here, but TJ Ford Jr. is aware of the length, and you got the help side coming over. That's just beautiful. Spoken from a defender. I love this. TJ was thinking that's my first career assist of many to come. <laughs> but a race quickly, and there's TJ looking for a man. Which has been very active. This is Sean Robinson from Austin P. A D1 transfer. Short. And pay attention to number five, Caden Shedrick, the transfer from Virginia. He's going to be a rim protector and an inside presence for this Texas team. You see the brace on his right shoulder. Had both shoulders worked on the offseason as Mitchell takes this one away. And Mitchell! I tell you, I talked to the coach about Mitchell getting his hands out because remember last game I said he's playing defense with his hands in his pockets. Yep. He, he, he got the message now. He said, uh oh, uh -oh. Shadrick, take it easy, big fella. His first points is a Texas Longhorn. Shadrick was cleared. Guy coaching in his first game as a head coach of the college well, level. It, well, it's tough from that standpoint, but the energy they had at shoot around this morning is so different than when you're playing against the guys. And that's where I talk about all these guys work around, they game on these cones and people that don't move. But now you got athletes out there, look what's happening. Yeah. Mm, you know what I'm you. I mean, they're a little out of control, a little sped up right now, but. That's by design by Texas. Well, the, the fact that you have so many new guys right now that are joining the team and now you're playing real games, you, you get to see where you're at exactly. Yeah. It's not about the verbiage. It's about going out and executing. And credit Texas to weathering that opening storm, having the counter punch. Our combo is called for the foul. They were able to get the best from UIW. You mentioned they're running on adrenaline on the opening tip. And Texas just stayed with them. Steady, steady. Didn't have those shots fall early, but then they started raining down. And checking in and getting his first bucket as a longhorn is Kendall Weaver, the WAC freshman of the year last year at UT Arlington. And see, again, you bring in another player that's just as athletic and just as zoned in on the defensive end as well. There is no drop-off right now from Texas. Longhorns are going to like number two in white. Rodney Terry says it's going to remind Texas fans of the nitty-gritty to Marcus Holland. Because that is a turnover. No, it's going to stay with the card of word as Elijah Davis lost the handle. You're talking about some elite defenders on the perimeter, though, between the Tyrese Hunter and a Kendall Weaver coming off the bench. Yeah, you know, you can tell in the warm-ups early, a lot of the kids here, they were, you know, you're at Texas as, as the drought finally ends. They're playing here, obviously representing Incarnate Word, but they're also trying to show what they can do against Texas. Oh, and I love the fact that Texas is like, yeah, what you gonna do? Yeah, Let's it. get this. Bring it. And bringing it and going down hard is the hard-charging Kendall Weaver. One of Kendall's strengths is getting to the cup. And that's what they love about him. I remember at one practice, Coach Terry stopped everything and said, hey, Kendall, no, we need you getting downhill because you're so good at it. Not because he doesn't want him to shoot, but he want to use his strength amongst his teammates. And this Texas coaching staff will tell you, he is as tough as they come. He is a pest defensively and just plays with all heart and grit. These are the transfers for Texas this offseason. Ace missed an elite shooter and scorer. Shedrick is trying to show that with a little more freedom offensively, he can do more. Horton is an elite outside shooter. 
as Weaver misses both. And Onyema has really shown up with a physical presence around the bucket. And this is what you have to understand is that when you bring guys in for the first year together, it's a struggle. You have so many different terminologies that they're coming from. That's where I give Rodney and the coaching staff so much credit at being able to communicate with these young men and get them to buy into the process of it not just being about you and the name on the back of your jersey, but on the name of the front of the jersey. And look at Weaver, just harassing defense. This staff feels that Ace Smith also can get after it defensively as well. That's been overshadowed by elite scoring. No, you got to be able to, you got to hold your own. So, oh, that's oh, that hold his own is shot created. But, you know, you can't be the weak link out there. It, it, I mean, and, and especially against, you know, lesser enrollment teams. You want to make sure that you're doing your part as well. Because if you are the weak link, where do you go? Oh, Yiba fighting with four Cardinals draws the whistle and uh you talk about what Oyama has been able to do in this in this period while digs are out this is his this is where he's going to make his money get those boards keep the ball high you never want to bring it down because the guards are down there you know little fellas you know little fellas like you got to get little fellas like, like no well I, mean, I remember when left. you I remember when you blocked my shot in a pregame show and I God, still hurts my feelings you never forgot that I never forgot that old news Damn. Start for life. Davis getting up in a hurry. Get inside the kick out. Morgan. No. Pushing here to Hunter. Little cradle high off the glass. It draws the foul. You know, you got to get someone back in transition, but Texas do a, does a very good job of taking that defensive rebound and pushing it down the floor. And that has really been the motivation for Rodney Terry, especially with the bigs. He's told Dylan Mitchell in particular, if you want to run, if you want to bring up the offense, get it started, initiate it, get the rebounding go. Mm -hmm. That's your opportunity to show you can have some of those ball skills. And, and you have to give it, you know, give him credit for that and not saying, I don't want you to do this. No, here's an opportunity for you to get some points, get your name in the paper. Yeah. Let Lowell talk about you all day. <laughs> but at the same time, you have a job to do on the floor for us, and that's a rim protector and get rebounds. And the message has been, too, you average 10 rebounds per game, then see what the NBA says. You're going to go on the top 10 in their words. Oh, out of bounds there is Dylan Hammond as the corner word is out of sorts. Texas even didn't get back in the game. That was the guy. You know, and you always got to have somebody quite like that on, on your team because they just have an uncanny ability of putting the ball in the basket. That's the reason why they recruited him here. There is a track from UVA. Kibble, the bucket, Caden Shedrick. You know, one of the hardest things when it comes to this move here is his timing. Now it's being patient enough, and I'm sure he still doesn't feel like himself just yet. Just give him a couple more weeks, and you're going to see even more fluidity in his moves. But it's great to see him out here right now. Bruce started practicing Wednesday. He's young. Yeah. That's, that's all so, we can okay. say on that. So that's an adequate amount of time. To get into the flow. Now, let's let's get into it though, Lowell. Okay. Now, now, he's been conditioning. He just hadn't been able to make contact with guys. They want to take the necessary precautions. And that's, that's, that's the beauty of that's great defense. That's the beauty of what goes on behind the scenes. Guys, they're not just sitting down doing yep. nothing. They are they're rehabbing with the trainers, their weights, they're doing everything necessary so that when they do start playing. Now you see them almost look as if they haven't missed the beat. Three fouls now on Sean Robinson. And that is a great point for Caden Shedrick. And this is what work. he's trying to do. Sure. Casey offensive skills of Bruce. He almost got it. Yeah. So he was pulled from Tony Bennett's starting five at Virginia because they wanted more offense on the court. And the ironic thing is, now he has the ability to show that he is a very good offensive player. Well, there's nothing like a fresh start and being somewhere where someone wants you. Yeah. And you're not always being 
downtrodden for something that they feel you can't do. Those are the little things where you get into the mindset of what coaches are asking certain players to do. And right here, I mean, Rodney welcomes everyone with open arms. Like, hey, man, this is a family. This is, is what we do. And they feel it, and you start to see it in their play as well. He's a player's coach, but sometimes that term is, is too is loose. Yeah, it, it, like you can do whatever you yes, want. Yeah, you can They're walk all over the coach. Yeah. No, this, he this, just builds relationships. He builds relationships. He keeps in contact with guys, but you got to think about it. Terry understands what it is to go into a young man's house and tell his parents what they plan on doing with him. Oh, Shedrick with the denial. Shedrick, nice. the scoop feed. Mitchell is airborne. The response by the Cardinals. No good from Heyman. A. Smith turns the corner and gets the roll. The NCAA's career active scoring leader. He's got seven. Cardinals so just can't find a bunch. No, and you got you to try to run your offense as much as you can. And I know it's easy to hear me say that, but you got to figure it out. Because you're not getting anything going one on one, and you don't want guys to separate. But what Shedrick was able to do here, you talk about a guy I told you it's about timing. Sometimes you just don't lose timing of blocking shots. And then to go in transition and see the guy coming down the middle, that's great basketball. That's that is something that Rodney Terry will have on the film session tomorrow as well as at halftime. With the title of Sharing is Caring. I love it, Bruce. Love it. And best get to call for this group. It is going to take them a while to completely get the rhythm down, play together, and get healthy. When they get Dylan the Sue back, that's a game changer. David has the rebound. I mean, to Sue down the stretch of the NCAA tournament was one of the best players in America. Talking about the most outstanding player of the Big 12 tournament as well as Mitchell. The physical rebound. Smith penetrating Cunningham looking for help. Mitchell. Don't look. And the good hands by Elijah Davis. You know, I like the attacking and getting off the ball right when it's necessary. Sometimes the ball sticks and you take one extra dribble. Now that guy is no longer open. That was open prior to your first dribble. So Texas is moving the ball as they should, but it's just so different than the St. Edwards game. Yeah. But that's maturation, right? Growth is... Oh! No! That rim has a family! Fade away. And then this spy Ricks. It's... it's, it's Cunningham, you talk about flow on offense. The ball does not stick with Cunningham on court. It's one thing that Rodney Terry loves about number 30. Hunter finds him. It was tipped, and it's going to the Cardinals. Tyrese Hunter thinks this, this should be Texas basketball. It should be. It, it, it should be, but that rep didn't, it, you know, they're human. <laughs> and, and you're up. All right, now. We're up, we're up 27. Come on out, people. This is not AAU. Stay off the reps. I love it. Extending the all the bridge to the guys wearing stripes. Were you always that way? Always. <laughs> Robinson inside and draws the foul. See, Carter Worth tries to stop the bleed. Yeah, yeah well, we need a tourniquet right now, but it's 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 one of those situations where, you know, hey, you ask, you ask for a, an opportunity. Yeah, what you gonna do with it? I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that when you get these moments, it's not just about you. It's about the university, and you want to make a good showing. But if you start separating in those moments, and it shows even more, and it's not what the university is all about. It has been a rough go as of late. Which is why the 
change was made from Carson Cunningham to Shane Hireman. Seven straight losing seasons. Incarnate Word comes into this year, picked dead last. But the South and Cup in the preseason say, four. Dead last. Well, I mean, last. You can say, you can say that last, but man, last last. You're so aggressive. We're talking about tourniquets. <laughs> Cunningham. And now's the three. The glue guy with the ball ain't sticking. You know. Shy Wicks. Hey, this guy's not shy, baby. Exactly. If there's he, one guy trying to make the most of this opportunity, it's Sky Wicks. And, 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 you know, and there's there's this part of the game where you miss three shots. You, you're a little hesitant. You want to make sure you get a wide open shot. And that's not Sky. Yeah. Sky, Sky said the only shot that's not good is one that's not taken. <laughs> Taste Miss Throws. Oh, and Cunningham with the rejection. Horns are running. Horton contact or give up. And it's going to be a corner word basketball. <laughs> oh, we talk about my guy. You okay. start to watch one of the better games that we've seen in the past well, decade. Well, do you, the, so I got a story for you. Okay. We're playing the Lakers with somebody during that time. And it's the national championship game when, when our Longhorns beat USC. Yeah. I'm walking around Beverly Hills. I see all this burnt orange. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and talk about a fantastic game at that. But, you know, I just, I'm glad to be in good company. Good company as always here in Austin, Texas. If it's burnt orange or silver and black, I'm good with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, you know, there's not a lot of classic games quite like that. No. No, that was. I mean, that's one of the greatest games of all time. Hey, speaking of the silver and black, uh oh, Jaron Jackson. I mean, this guy, the first Spurs championship run, was one of the sneaky great players on that team, helping D Rob and Timmy win it all in 1999. You said he helped D Rob and Timmy, or. Yeah, yeah. yeah he check, helped. Check, check yourself. He helped. Huh? Bruce. Bruce. What had happened? Bruce. Bruce. Jared Just was saying. a dog, Bruce. Yeah, I, look here. I played against Jared so, okay. and CBA as well. Okay, see? so then what did you do with uh, Tim Duncan? We're not talking my... about me right now. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, that's good defense. Oh, but even with the outstretched okay, arms Scott. of Yima Sky Wicks. Okay, Sky. Knocks it down. I'm envious of the hair. I, I, that's know, a lot, I, man. I, I, you know, I, I give it to him. Eight points for 13 shooting. Here's Oyema. Physical presence. Patience. You know, what I like to see with Oyema is just a little quicker into that move. Because you remember, having a low base, you get pushed, you get bumped off that base. And I and I feel like he maybe got a little, a little foul. But to see what happens when you start... You start messing with the officials. They start messing with you. But right right here, the nice seal right there. Right there, is, it's either a jump hook right hand or come back to the left. But just that extra step. You know, way to be strong with it, though. Yeah. That yeah. young man's shoulders gone forever. They do. So the urgency on the move, being quicker, how long can that take to develop? Is that something you can do in season? Well, yes. It, it, it starts in practice, though. So, you know, sometimes guys, they get uh, turnovers. Sometimes guys get to, you know, want to get in their bag when they don't need to get in their bag. Yeah. That's that term when they say, I'm going, I'm getting in my bag. I'm doing my stuff. No, leave that stuff alone. Just <laughs> give me simplistic play. There's certain guys that can go KD can back, get in his bag, but there's not many. TJ could get in his bag. His bag was just full of quickness. Yeah, so you mentioned two. So that tells you about the elite company. Three-point shot no good. Sky Woods, is he going to shoot it? <laughs> no. The setup to Josh Morgan wide right. Hayden with the rebound. Elijah Davis Guy that led Juco basketball with 7.6 assists per game last season at Walter State. Late clock situation here. Hunter with the suffocating defense. Rattles out. And there is the rebound by Caden Shedrick.
Approaching the final minute of play here in the first half. It was a frenetic opening five minutes. As the corner word is called for the foul. You, know, you hear coach call out certain plays right now, but this is not a situation where you're getting deep into your playbook. This is where you want your guy scoring out of your basic set. So whatever it is that you're doing every single day, this is what you you want to see guys utilize the options out of it as you can in a game like this. There's no, it makes no sense to call a play for someone right now. You just want to let it flow out of the continuity of the game. Bruce, if we're getting nitpicky in the first half of Texas, free throw shooting, five of eleven before that made okay. there. It, you know, it, it, it means a lot, and I, I'm constantly stressing this to my kids. You know, we played in the tournament last weekend, and our first game, we lose by three, but we missed 15 free throws. Oh. Yeah, exactly. I ran them till they couldn't run them. I, I'm sorry. I, my therapist said I need to stop bringing my stuff out to everybody else. This so, is good you know, for but you this, this is, this, I, I just love being here, though, people. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Open three ball, oh, but Mitchell closes so quickly. I was saying open three pointer and Mitchell was there in a blink of an eye as Shedrick is fouled in transition. How do you do that? Yeah, now you see I talk about him getting used to the up and down of the game. Yeah. Shedrick, you know, but this contest, this is this is a winning play here. Look at that extension. And he got a piece of it. But on the trans on on the fast break, you got Shedrick running the lane. And he just he just kept running at times like oh no I need to shoot this. <laughs> the free throws it's starting to fall. You know we're looking at this. It's a 31 point game, and and my first year in college, you know these were games that I I was, I was starting to get warm, baby. Yeah, coach. I'm looking. He's, I'm looking at the coach every time he looked down the bench. So the walk-ons are starting to oh, look yeah. around but, a little well, bit. Why you got? Well, I wasn't a walk-on. Well, I'm, but, okay. But the way you said that, you know. I was a freshman. That's, you know. I, My <laughs> point being that <laughs> all a, the scholarship guys have already okay. pretty much played. So who a, else are you going to play? I was a 75 star. You're getting very offensive. Offensive. <laughs> Defensive, I should say. I don't mean to hurt your feelings on day two working together. That is Dylan Mitchell with the foul. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm telling you, I see him over there. I see him stretching their the legs a little bit like, yeah. <laughs> Every time Coach looks down the bench, I'm like this, looking right back at him. Was, was you, 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 you ready call for me, me? Coach? Oh, you ready for me? I thought you said my name. But you can't bring those guys out the first time. No, 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 no. There's like rules of engagement, right? No, you could. I mean, you could. He's the coach. Who's, who's going to disagree with you? Yeah. Hey, I don't Lord, think you're up do 32. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is. Now I'm gonna tell you this. A lesson has been learned yeah, starting is. games as far as respecting your opponent. Big players. That's all that Shane Hireman has to work with is hit the final 30 seconds of the first half. Five Texas players with at least seven points in the first time. Opportunity to work on some late clock execution. Yep. Oh, don't pick up your dribble. Two on the shot clock. Mitchell has to go. He doesn't know. So this is where you can't get nitpicky, right? If that is a meaningful moment no. in winning time, you got to execute better. And, and then, absolutely, because it, do, it doesn't turn on like a switch. You have to work at it, but more importantly, in those scenarios, sometimes coaches are saying, okay, because of what transpired, you can't pick up your dribble as the guard up there. Okay. And sometimes coach say, okay, I got to share that with him because if we're going to do this, I got to have the utmost confidence in him that he will do what's necessary. So point eight left is picked up by Ace Mason. That really sums up this first half completely dominated by Texas. Cardinals wanted to run with him. She, that she's finished the game, the first half with. It's not about, oh, okay, I'm going to take a couple of plays off now. No, you got to get into the habit of really executing to the point where it doesn't matter who you're playing against because you're just doing what you need to do. And that is a great point. Let's see if Texas can just be ruthless. That's not how you want to start the half. 
but is this a team that is just going to put you away and not care about your feelings? Because when it's Big 12 time, you give a team a glimmer of hope, they don't make That's it right. pay. And Big, 12, excuse me, and Big 12 time, you're going up against a lot of athletes as well. Here's Horton. An electric dunk in the first half. And five Texas players with at least seven points. Little stop, pop, roll, and drops it. It Horton now with nine. Yeah, and you know that first play, they tried to go inside, and Oyama did not do what he should have as far as holding his man off. Those are little things, and you're trying to continue to develop here and gain the coach's confidence. Great hands by Horton. Onyema had to corral that one, throws it right back to Sky Wicks. What do you see, Bruce? I, I see someone that did not come out prepared for the second half. And, and look at it, look at the bench right now. I, 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 I'm, I'm a huge fan of guys who get an opportunity, especially when there's injuries and guys coming back from those injuries, but you gotta maximize the most out of that time. You don't have other times. I'm a fan of guys that don't back down, right? When, when going gets tough, and it would be really easy to fold, Sky Wicks has not done that. Onyema, no good. And see, Onyema right now, looks he looks like he's feeling sorry for himself because he's made a few mistakes. And look at that. He was not ready for that caught by Ace. Excuse me, by Devontae Dennis. But this is the part of coaching where they want him, they want him to be a certain type of player. And coach is talking to him right now. Now, people be like, hey, man, why he tripping? They at 30. You know what? This is what a coach does. It doesn't matter what the score is. It's about getting the point across to the player so that he can go out and be better. And what championships are yes. made of. Mitchell with the rejection. Showing his ability to get out to the perimeter. A little sloppy there as Hunter tried to get it to Mitchell. So, to your point, it's not crisp to start. No, it's not. It's very sloppy. And and even though you're doing certain things on defense, it has to be on the offensive end, too. you got to turn that into an opportunity of, of, of a basket. And, again, I told you earlier, the switch doesn't come on and off. you got to keep doing it until it becomes a habit. Wicks wanted another one, threw it up. Great offensive rebound there by Josh Morgan. Jeez. And Shedrick getting out there. Sky Wicks not backing down for a moment. That is a dude on the big stage that wants to make his name, and he's got 13. Now, let's just be real here. I don't think Incarnate Word can win this game. How can they leave this building feeling good about their night? As Horton shoots the three today. The way you do that is you start 0-0, and you have a coach talking about what the score is. Oh, Ace Miss! Meet some of your new fans. So, I, 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 and, and there's TJ. TJ's moving all around the building. But great kick out. He took his time, found a three-point shooter. And there is Ace Miss saying hello to the Gresset family. <laughs> Drew Gresset, one of the great walk-ons here in Texas. Is up hanging out with TJ Ford, former colleague here at LHN, as we got a strump for the basketball and jump ball. And that will stay with UIW. You can be an all-time great walk-on, right? Like that's possible? Absolutely. Okay. You, and you can do things in a way. I mean, they made a movie after a guy at Notre Dame. Really? It's a great Fun. point. That is a great point. I'm, I'm just a wealth of knowledge here. Just, just, <laughs> hey, just saying. We're going to need that wealth of knowledge for the last 60 <laughs> minutes and 44 seconds. Outside shot is dropped. Josiah Hammonds, transfer from Truman, oh, was fifth nationally in JUCO scoring a year ago. He was not supposed to play in this game tonight. A late injury. Hunter. Oh, that looked like Devontae Dennis got ball there, but some body as well by Dennis. And, you know, 
as, as we see this shot go in, you, you know, it's just the game is guys want to talk, you know, now look what I did. Yeah, I made a three. What you, you can't guard me. And, and, and I'm sure that's <laughs> just like, hey man. Check my resume. No, 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 not even that. What's the score? Oh, the point of oh, what's the score? Really? Did you talk a lot of junk in your day? No. Absolutely. Did it. No, I didn't. Okay. I, I, you see how quick I answered that? Yeah. But I came up in a different era. See, it, it wasn't about you talking and, and taunting others. I knew what I needed to do, so I didn't need to tell them or get them, you know, riled up. Yeah. Like, if, Extra motivation. Kobe, if Kobe was missing, oh, I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm Let him be, be, right? Kobe, how's the family? Oh, oh man. These girls are glowing, man. Oh, man. Oh, my. This man is on a mission that Sky Wicks played eight games for Missouri State in 2021 before going the Juco route. See, the coaches have tried to stress to him he's learning that he can dominate the game without scoring, but this situation... <laughs> Not really following that game plan. He's trying to win it. Win. He gets to himself. We, we call that giving yourself a chance. Yeah. And but someone's got to do it, right, Bruce? Yes. And and obviously the coaches have confidence in him because you haven't seen that that short leash with him. Mm -hmm. So and I speaking to coach before the game, he talked about how high he was on him, and, and I was looking forward to seeing what he could do. T.J. Ford oh. Jr. is checked back in. Heyman laying out for it. Horton pushing. Shedrick! No contest! Like my man Lance Blanks transferring from Virginia to Texas to finish his collegiate career. Twenty-three fast break points by the long one. A little hesitation. Hunter got him up. Nice. A little look off, and what a finish by Tyrese. That's a great downhill play right there. He knew that the guy wasn't coming off the corner. He had a clear lane to the basket. He just had to finish. T.J. Ford Jr. learned his pops number 11 in the game. Ace miss. Oh. Stinking with them. Okay. You want to T.J. Be in your shirt. You want to talk? T.J. Engineering. The UIW offense. Tough matchup for him. Oh, wow. They called him for a pop. You, hey, you can't ball? do that here, Gary? Austin. I mean... This debut, man, you know it's, it's awesome, right? 22 years ago, I was able to be 18 years old as a freshman and being able to play my first game to be able to be in witness my my son the opportunity of being a D1 basketball player, uh, have his first game here. So it's like you know reliving the moment and just enjoy watching it, man. You know, uh, so it's a dad good, you know, dad dad dream, man. You know, on your kid going out playing and. and Having a good time with it. Oh, there's some vision. Give him the assist. Oh, gotta there, finish that. some quickness, too. It's in the DNA. What did you tell him before he came out here as he just took one to the nose? Uh, you know, it's, he put the work in. Right, coaching staff over there is doing a pretty good job. He's just trying to. Hope that he can relax, you know what I mean, and enjoy it. Uh, just tried to express to him that it was okay being nervous. I was a, I was really, really nervous my, my first game, and the jitters will, will, you know, it'll play out once you get on the court. And uh, Other than that, you know, I mean, he, he's on the court, you know, getting the experience. Uh, are you expecting freshman kids to come in and have a, a, a huge impact, especially at this level against one of the top teams in the country? Uh, it's a big challenge, but being able to get out there and uh, just watching him, you know, just not get down on himself and just keep playing. As a father, can you can you share, you know, you just spoke on a little bit, having a chance to get on the floor. It's not just about going to a school and sitting on the bench and saying, hey, I'm on the team. You want your kid to get that experience because that's the only way they can learn and grow. Yeah, I, you know what? I'll, you know, me being in youth basketball, 
a, a lot of kids want to be able to play, right? I think it's some of the kids that have these dream schools and, and, and these aspirations that want to play at the biggest level that sometimes they will sacrifice, you know, the you know the playing time of the minutes because of the the, the, the goal that they had. Um, but when you look at it, obviously being on the court, you, you, you know, you, you get better by being on the court, getting experience. Now, whether that's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 5 minutes, um, you want a kid to be able to touch it and, and feel it and experience it. So, for me, I, I'm, I'm really just grateful. You know, I, I think for me, it's just, I got to thank the coaching staff at the, at the same time of being able to understand that uh, I'm really not the parent anymore. Right. Right? The, the coaching staff at any university a kids go to, they, 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 they are the parent, right? Mm -hmm. On the court, off the court. And I give a, a, a great um, respect to the coaching staff up there at, at, at UIW. Coach Hartman was even telling us he, he doesn't really still understand how they got your son and how he was slept on. What do you think the upside is for Junior? Because Hiraben thinks it's the sky's the limit for him. Uh, of course, the sky, you know, is the limit, right? He's in the same unique situation I was. I look at the University of Texas when I attended here. Uh, it wasn't known as the elite level of, of basketball play. And he has the opportunity uh, at the level that he, he's at, him and the coaching staff, to try to do some amazing things. It's not going to happen in year one. Uh, but I think what they're putting together, I think the infrastructure that they have, I think the things they're doing with the kids off the court, uh, it's very, very important and very, very valuable, especially uh, knowing where a lot of these kids come from, what they have and what they don't have, and still coming uh, to work every day with a, with a good spirit. Uh, being down, you know, 30-some points, these guys are still playing they're hard. Playing. Got to. That dude is not afraid to shoot now, the basketball. He, Sky no, but if, if you go back to the first play of the game on the back door we had, if he make that dunk, the game that's was totally different. Yeah, so that, 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 that miss, yeah, that yeah, miss changed minds. everything. Great minds. <laughs> you said it. That, that, that oh, changed. That changed everything. If, if that dunk goes in the first, the first possession. Right, the first half becomes totally different. At least for the first ten because minutes. Because he misses yeah. his first three shots. So if he made that one, now that next one's a little easier, I believe. I just. I agree with you. Come, <laughs> get that dunk the first play of the game in a half court. That's the moment. That 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 was that was the moment for them. You know. So I've heard so many stories of you throughout the years. Critical situations. Coach Barnes has, has drawn up something, and then it essentially turns to TJ time. TJ, what are we going to do? And you felt that ownership to take over in those situations. How did you get comfortable being that kind of voice and having that kind of authority? I mean, I grew up playing on bad teams, right? Well, I was the only <laughs> star player on the team playing against stacked players. And then in AAU basketball, I was able to play on some of the better teams where you had other guys that was really, really scored. So for me, it's just being able to facilitate or being able to, to manage the game and being able to know my moments when I can attack, when I shouldn't attack. And the game is coaches are making adjustments. One thing I can do is identify adjustments and I can figure out how to, you know, how to make the best situation to to come back what they're trying to stop me from doing. Yeah, see, uh, I, I wouldn't so it's all chess that. match. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have understood that. You were just trying to stop the, it's the like beauty this. of the game and, and the different intelligence that you have in the game where he could figure that out, especially with his quickness. That, how often were you pressed in AAU? I mean, yeah, see, that's not, really not, not much that's in, in <laughs> high school, you know, in high school basketball, people, I mean, people tried it, but I mean, Sounds like they tried it, I yeah. can either be patient, but I, I mean, I, I'm going to split it. I, I just, man, I, I, look, being able to have speed, quickness, agility, with ball handles and being able to move and weave. That was so unique. I, I know it's not another basketball player like myself, especially at my size. Uh, we were just talking off, off, off air before we got back on camera about uh, some of the bumps that we see these guys have, and you feel like they have them beaten, have the momentum, and then they just kind of stop. So they, they're not great at playing through the contact or bursting through that contact. Right. And you're not, you're not, you're not going to see a lot of players being able to just blow by people. TJ, before we get into this break here, what do you think of the job RT is doing? RT is doing an excellent job. I mean, I, I, I stand on that. I, I, was, I publicly said that last season he was doing a great job. Uh, he has the character. He has the energy. He has the style to let guys play. Uh, and they got a lot of freedom. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, he was able to retain a, a lot of our players. Uh, he was able to add some addition. That's a guaranteed bucket right there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> 
Quincy bucket. So when you look at you know what we was able, what he was able to Tony Ham with 19 combined. But the thing I love is that shooting percentage. Each one of those individuals are yeah. shooting over 50 percent. They're they're not taking the Skywicks approach. Ooh. Well, he's he's getting close. He's seven for 17, 17 now. Yep, yep. 70-33, Texas with the lead, trying to finish here on the 12 minutes to go in the season debut for both teams. Longhorns pick number three in the Big 12 behind Kansas and Houston. Talk about an absolutely loaded conference. My guy, Sky Wicks, Eight does 18. it again. Eight for 18. Let's go. If he made that dunk. Yeah, he, he the the TJ, your point. Texas with a, another freshman out there, Devon Pryor, the only actual freshman scholarship player on the Longhorns. And there is Weaver into the hands of Sky Wicks, not by design. A little bounce pass, get creative. Cunningham is there. Cunningham pushes to Mitchell. He's open. Weaver for three. Kendall Weaver. UT Arlington, last year's whack freshman of the year, led the Mavs in three-point shooting. Really glad he made that shot because that first one, the coaching <laughs> staff is not looking like, oh, yes, that's what we wanted. <laughs> that's the opposite. The Wick show. Travel. Oh. Yeah, and that's what <laughs> Pryor was saying. It should be a travel, and instead it's a foul on to Bob Pryor. You know, it's, it's, it's about short-term memory in this game, and I love the fact that Mitchell willingly gave it to him. He wasn't phased by him missing the first shot. Hey, here you go again, partner. <laughs> hey, I am impressed, though, how quickly it seems like these guys have gelled in terms of knowing each other. I know there's going to be bumps in the road, and it's going to be more difficult when you get more difficult competition. Yeah. But it seems like these guys legitimately know each other well. And they like each other. I, yeah. think, I think that's the bigger thing is that. Oh! Oh, my. Oh, my, indeed. Caden Shedrick, go back to next week. Right back at you, says Dylan Heyman. We can do it, too, down in San Antonio. What kind of party is it? It's a block party. Uh, you, no, not, not here. Uh, I love it when big men go up there. Oh, don't, oh okay. don't look at him. Say this. And you cocked it back to him and almost broke his shoulder. <laughs> Got to be careful. Again, Skywicks is going for it. Nothing negative to say. There's a foul on Dylan Hayden. But Rodney Terry understands, too, that this is going to be a process to get this team ready for the Big 12. No, absolutely. And because it, the physicality is so much more greater in the Big 12, you have athletes in that conference that can guard positions one through five. So it's not just, you know, being able to dominate from the standpoint of what you look like on the floor, but it's other teams that are doing just as much as you are. There's Pryor. High Archer gets it back. Freshman from Houston, no. Rebound, Dennis. I'm intrigued to see how Ace Miss does against bigger guards in Big 12 play. Uh, he's whistled for the foul. You know, he, he's the type of play. Like, he can average all the points he's averaged in his career at Oral Roberts. Just going up against him. Thin guys. Yeah, there, yeah, he's played against a variety of type of different individuals, and he's crafty enough to create for himself and utilize the pick and roll. So, no, this is this is what he's doing. He, he understands how to score in multiple ways. Bruce, he scored in double digits now in 113 of his 124 career games. Yeah, that's a track record. That is that's impressive, but it speaks to his his ability to score. Yeah, you know, it's and and obviously some people will say different things like, oh, well, he didn't play in this conference. Like, I don't care, man. You got to give credit where credit is due, especially when you do it as consistently as he does. Prior looking for the block, Dennis gets the finish and has done it, taking a team to the Sweet 16 that really was not supposed to be there in the NCAA tournament.
Dylan D'Souza just waiting, chomping at the bit for his opportunity. And Shedrick took a hard hit. Shedrick was a high school guard, as we see Dylan D'Souza. It really grew into his forward frame. So he has a lot of skills. That and this is not a knock to Coach Bennett's system at all at Virginia. They play a slower, more methodical pace that just was not set for Shedrick's skill set as Rodney Terry picks up the technical foul. And as you know, Shedrick just now getting back onto the floor, it's great to see your coach go on the back for you. Rodney felt like he got fouled there and yeah. let the official know. Now, Scott, Scott has missed multiple free throws tonight as well as multiple shots, but I think there is there's something in this young man that the coach sees his ability to get shots. And again, I love it to see a guy not back down, especially when things are tough. He's playing with a certain type of edge right now that not a lot of dudes are playing with. He's no. carrying UIW. Yeah. And and that's the beauty of this game is that at the end of the night, he's going to say, when I played Texas, yeah. there is nothing that I wish I did because I got a chance to do everything I could to try to help my cause and my team. And that's got to be a great feeling, yeah. right? Leaving the building knowing that you left it out on the court. And and because there's some guys sitting on the bench right now that, that wish they would have done things differently. Uh-huh. And we'll probably be reminded of that by higher than the next film study. Here's Shellick inside. Size mismatch. Cutting him. Passes up the three. Trying to thread the needle to Katie Shedrick. All right, we need a TJ Ford. Button. Sky Wicks misses the three. Hunter transition. And he is fouled. That's going to be on Skywicks. Rodney Terry is also, along with a winning brand of basketball, it just is a more entertaining watch. I think the fans really appreciate how this team looks. It starts with defense, and RT will tell you that. But there's more freedom offensively. And it's a better, more entertaining watch for fans. It is, but, but I think something else you got to take into account is the fact that he's here nine seasons Don't under you. Barnes yep. and, and understands the culture and, and had great times. Oh, my. And give a, a little short, he's holding his left hammy. Looks like he's okay. But, you know, Rodney understands the culture here. He understands what the university wants as far as trying to continue to build better Texas athletes. So it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And much as he was the right-hand man for Chris Beard, he's got Frank Haith yes. as his right-hand man. And Haith also was the assistant under Rick Barnes and a head coach at Miami, head coach at Missouri, head coach at Tulsa. That is a great hire. And Rodney Terry told me, picked up the phone, called our friend Lance Blanks. He said, hey, what do you think about Frank Hayden in this assistant role? It's my top lieutenant. And Lance told him, that is a home run hire if you can pull it off. And he did. This by hand is outside. And Texas basketball. What do you think that means for a head coach to have not just a coaching staff that he can trust from top to bottom, but that one dude that there's a special connection. No, the, the connection is necessary, but also the fact that you got so much seniority. Guys that have been around, they're not trying to make a name for themselves right now. They're confident and comfortable in their own skin as Oyama makes the dump. But, you know, when you have that, now egos are out the door. Yeah. Now it's truly about the program, especially for those who are doing another tour here. It is a great staff. Steve McClain, elevated from a special assistant role. All-court assistant coach this year. And Brandon Chappelle coming back for his second year. 
As Texas tries to finish strong, that's Steve McClain right there. The DC blaring. And everybody's still in the mood. The corral has stuck around, even though this game is lopsided and then some. TJ Ford Jr., the inbound, and the collect and flush by Sean Robinson. TJ Ford Jr. set that one up. Beautiful moment here for the son of the Texas legend. That is great to see, Bruce. It is, and the fact that you're still executing right now. There's no die in this game, and that's what you need, especially in college basketball. You're gonna take your bumps and bruises because you're playing a, a top team. That's so fitting that TJ Ford Jr. picks up his first career assist in this building. Mitchell, after another rebound, is fouled by Devontae Dennis. I like the look Devontae gave him up. He's like, me? <laughs> so you're the only one that was near the ball, son. They go on somebody, and they ain't no one else around. So Texas is 14 to 22 from the line. You know, Mitchell tested the NBA waters. Decided to come back and big pickup for him. He's elevated his work ethic. Freshman year, like a lot of freshmen figuring things out. Also came in as a top tip recruit. I'm sure it was a wake up call in many ways, but he's back and better than ever. Get in there, TJ. It's prior. Mitchell. Oh, Yiba, the UTEP transfer. Hunter is trying to cut and get out. The block by Sean Robinson. You know, as, as I said earlier, he had his shot early on in that possession. He had to jump hook with the left hand. So it's like you got to take advantage of those opportunities because right here, you should have been up with it. But then you, you, you're still going up with your left hand with the defender right in front of you. It's... It's a difficult, it's a difficult shot if you're gonna wait that long. So what, what is that? Is it too much processing, not just trusting yourself? What leads to that hesitation? No, what leads to the hesitation is being comfortable in traffic. And so he hasn't developed that comfort just yet that he can do those things in traffic. There's no way, it has to become more about all right, one dribble shot. Not two, three moves, especially with a smaller guy. Just go with the jump hook. Trust your jump hook. But you have to do it in practice before you can do it in the game. Have something that you can fall back on yes. and then build off that. Yep. He led UTEP in field goal percentage and blocks last season. I think Rodney Terry sums it up with only him when he says, He's a grown man. <laughs> you see that great vision. Dylan Mitchell off the feed from Zarek Oyema. Comfortable there. That's a great feed there. Ford, give it to him. T.J. Ford Jr. How about that? And Pops... What a moment. <laughs> and this is a UIW bucket that everybody in Burnt Orange can celebrate. Get it done, young man. The three-point play. First bucket as a collegiate <laughs> athlete. First assist that we saw earlier. And TJ gets to see it in his house. That's an awesome moment, Bruce. It is. As a father, it's just, and not just a father, there's a lot of Texas alum here tonight, and they're happy for him because of what TJ was able to do. You got to. I mean, this is the guy that really set the foundation for the modern era of success for Texas basketball. As Mitchell got that one to go. We heard him in our conversation. This was not a basketball powerhouse. Right. They had some moments, right, with BMW. And, and that era... But the sustained, consistent success, that was set up by TJ. Yeah, and, you know, I tell you, you can't, you can't teach quickness. That's just not something you can do. So for what TJ was able to do, 
it was he was a blur on the floor. If you turned your head looking for the pick oh, or the screen, gone. he was gone the other direction. And back then he had a little bounce too. Oh yeah. Woo! And you love hearing him talk about the game because Bruce, our eyes were both wide open. He obviously sees the game in a very rare way as his son goes to the bench. And being involved in the AAU world, I love it when former players are talking about the game and what's necessary for the game, but not destroying the kids because they don't necessarily know how to play the game. Yeah. Because you got to teach them. At the end of the day, you can sit up and be one of those grumpy old men. I don't want to be around a grumpy old man. You can tell these are valuable minutes as Ace Miss. Oh, Weaver! Oh no! Kendall Weaver getting into the mix. Abusing the rim. Oh, and picking the pocket. Weaver staying up. He's got Mitchell. He's going to take the three instead. Oh, you better knock that down, Bruce. Oh no, that's the lob. Ace miss. Another attempt for Weaver. All because he didn't throw the lob. No, Put I'm it down. I, I'm, <laughs> joking. I'm joking. But no, it's like these moments, you don't get it again. That oh, the no look inside to Sky Wicks. Set he, up by Hammonds. I will say this. We didn't look right at the bench and coach my bad. It's yeah. what easy did it. Cause what do you think about this though? 4 13 left. And most of the starters or key rotational guys are still out there. RT hasn't emptied his bench, so to speak. Well, you, you said for incarnate word as well as as well as us. Well, the fact that I don't think Coach really trusts a lot of the others at incarnate. Well, you got a lot of young players there, and and it's it's still about scoring the basketball. Also shows how valuable all of these minutes are, especially for Texas and in Carter Ward with so many new faces. They need as many live reps as possible. Mitchell and Cunningham, I mean, just fighting to the very last moment. Trying to figure out what's what. 12 points. And he's just gotten back, which say Wednesday. Yeah. Started practicing on Wednesday, had those shoulder issues that had procedures on in the offseason, wasn't able to do much of anything besides the conditioning that you pointed out. Was Cunningham all over this one, shot clock violation on UIW. But that's an efficient debut, and honestly, been a lot of efficient performances by these Longhorns. You know, the most impressive aspect of things to me with him is that he played within himself. He did not try to, oh, let me show them I can shoot threes. Let me show them I can do this or that. It was truly about what they work on in practice. Rim protector, post up. Do your thing when you get the ball. One more drive by Sky Wicks. We don't see that too often, though. Guys that are okay just being a little sublime. Well, but when you talk about a championship team, caliber team, you know, that run in the NCAAs last year, that helped with everyone's mindset right now because they understood it wasn't about one or two guys. Yeah. It was about a group of guys playing together for one common goal, and that's to continue to be the best they could be each and every night. And that was a deep team with a lot of key contributors from the top to the bottom of that rotation. And even though you lose a lot, Timmy Allen... You don't really replace the production, especially the experience of someone like him, Marcus Carr. Still do have guys like Tyree Sutton, who came a lot down the stretch last season. Once he figured out the cramping issue, to be an absolute difference maker. And then the blue guy that you mentioned is, that's a block by Wicks. Brock Cunningham certainly is about the one he called here. Yeah, watch that one back. Hammonds was looking for his moment. Hunter back to Horton. Horton let it fly. That's what he does. In the L. Horton, you can call him IT. It, the value of two points is still two points. Miss 
opportunities you don't get often, especially when it when it comes to doubles. So finish that point being is out of bounds by Hammonds. Right, that's four points they could have had tonight, but they missed the dunk. Lay it up. It's still two points regardless. See, that would bother me after this game. Like, man, I could have, I could have had those two points. Yeah, but I, I, but I tried. It's my to. opportunity. Yes. And now it is a chance for the walk-ons to check in. Let's go. We got Cole Bott, Colorado. We got a legacy, Gavin Perryman. Alex Senemekwe, number 14 as well, out there with Horton Perryman. Oh, make you miss a okay. Gavin Perryman. I love Gavin's little one dribble. Did he didn't try to get too fancy. That was nice. Pops played here as well. In and out. Oh, Cole Park <laughs> elevating for the rebound. <laughs> Very the shoes. And it makes way. Here's oh, a fresh come on, young fella. Got to know where down. you are. Got to know where you are on the floor. Down. Now we talk about textbook basketball and, and keeping it simple. Here we go. Shot fake. One dribble into the left foot. Knocked down. See, he didn't, he didn't need to get in his bag. His <laughs> bag was already there. Now, Preston Clark checks in wearing number 20. There's TJ Ford Jr. working on another fresh but out of Houston. It's a switch. Why not another one? Sky Wicks! Make the most of the opportunity. Sky Wicks! That's a pretty cool name, too. Sky Wicks. 25 points. It's like one of those fake names in a movie about basketball. <laughs> I was wondering Prince where you were going with fake name. Uh oh! No. <laughs> hey, shoot your shot literally. <laughs> hey, I will say this: the mullet is on point. Now, you're not going to agree with that. Yeah. It's a good look. I mean, it's a good look. I rocked that for a little bit. Did you? Yeah. When? Yeah. Last year? No, like probably seven years ago. Six years ago. Oh, wow. It's a great question, man. <laughs> Life decisions. <laughs> I was going through some stuff. No, I was just kidding. Oh. I think it was like bonding with my son. He had a mullet at the time. He was like, Dad, oh, why would you do that to your child? I didn't do it. No, 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 no. You're gonna blame it on Mike. Wow, Lord, that's no, that's, no, 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 that's, no, no, Come on, man. Blaming it on my son for his decisions as a seven-year-old. Clark's got to put it up again. Bot, do it, bot. No. 19 seconds left. Here's four. All the hammers. He's bought. The shot is up and good. DJ Ford Jr. making Pop smile. <laughs> it is college debut. With a round of applause for the debut of the new look Texas Longhorn for Rodney Terry at the helm. Trying to set the foundation on another deep incident.